I would like to welcome um, from the Labour Party the Foreign Affairs spokesperson, David Parker. Uh, Tina Koto Katoa, uh, thank you for arranging this uh, protest. Of course, some things haven't changed uh, since we last met here, uh, but a, a, a momentous step has been taken by the International Court of Justice. Before I, before I launch into that, I would just remind everyone that we in the Labour Party have called for the immediate recognition of Palestine, for the participation by New Zealand in the International Court of Justice case brought by South Africa alleging uh, genocide and other war crimes. Uh, we, have, we have opposed the, uh, the participation by New Zealand in the attacks against the Houthis. We know the cause of that particular conflict and I think most people here would share our concern that the risk of a wider conflict in the Middle East is rising by the day and what a shocking prospect that is. Of course, the big thing that has changed, the war hasn't ended, the destruction of property, the killing of people hasn't ended, but what has changed is there has been a ruling by the International Court of Justice. It is unambiguous. It's not about the war. And I know that the, the sense of injustice of, for the uh, Palestinian people goes back to the Nakba in 1948. But the focus of the judgments is in the period since 1967. More than 50 years ago already, close to 60 years of an illegal occupation of the West Bank, parts of East Jerusalem, and also illegal activities in the Gaza Strip. And I just want to list some of the things that the um, International Court of Justice have found are illegal. Forcible evictions, extensive house demolitions, restrictions on when people can live and move, transfer by, by Israel of settlers to the West Bank and East Jerusalem, its failure to prevent or punish attacks by settlers against Palestinian people, restricting the access of the Palestinian population to water, Israel's use of the natural resources of the occupied Palestinian territory, and the extension of Israel's law to the West Bank and East Jerusalem. So these, these are unambiguous findings as to breaches of law. They're not allegations of breaches of law. These are a finding by the International Court of Justice, of which New Zealand is part, that should be adhered to by Israel. Some of these things are consistent with earlier UN Security Council resolutions, including Resolution 2334, that the prior national government could take some pride in supporting at the time when New Zealand was on the Security Council at the UN. There are members of the current government who disown that resolution because they thought it went too far. And I think there will be members of the current government who do not like the current, re the current decision of the International Court of Justice. But it is the rule of law. It's the international rule of law. This government talks about support for the international rules-based order. Well, here goes an opportunity for them to show that that is real. There is now no place for countries like New Zealand to hide. We have a duty to the International Court of Justice, as the, make, as the judgment makes clear, not to render assistance to the government of Israel and its actions which are responsible for these breaches of international law. So it's time for the New Zealand government to call on Israel to, to, to move out of the occupied territories. They mu we must communicate this directly with the government uh, of Israel, making it clear that their illegal occupation of the territories must uh, end. We must also look at the other measures that are called on to make sure that New Zealand is not rendering aid or assistance. And I heard your comments very clearly. I won't repeat those. Um, but there is no really excuse for delay. This is an unambiguous judgment. The international community should uphold it and Israel should withdraw from the occupied territories. Woo!